Welcome back to Ben's Top 10. And when I was a kid, we booed the villains in cartoons. You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. That's a signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Welcome back to my countdown of my favorite episodes from every season of the Twilight Zone. Season 2 for the Twilight Zone further pushed the boundaries on what this show could do. This season is home to some of the show's most famous episodes and has some of my favorite episodes of the whole series. Let's not waste any more time. Here are my top 10 favorite Twilight Zone episodes of Season 2. Number 10, The Obsolete Man. Burgess Meredith plays a librarian in a future where books have been deemed obsolete and he is sentenced to death. In his last request, he asks the leader in the future to spend his last day with him. The librarian proceeds to read the Bible to the leader, and the leader starts to go nuts when he believes what is read to him. This episode touches on a very scary subject. Could you imagine a world where books have been considered obsolete and free will has been banned? That is so uncomfortable to think of. I need a happiness boost. Oh look, kitties! Yay! Anyway, this episode is also great because Burgess Meredith is in it. He never disappoints. Anyway, the obsolete man makes us wonder if our society will head into this direction in the future. Well, they tried to ban the internet, so I guess we're already there. Number 9. The Howling Man A wandering traveler stumbles upon a castle where a group of monks reside. The monks claim that they have captured the devil himself, but he appears to be just a normal man. The traveler then debates with himself to let the man out of his prison. This episode explores how humans are always wanting to do the right thing, but that no matter what we do, there is always consequences. It has a Pandora's box vibe to it. Between you and me, I have the devil locked inside my basement. I've had him in there for roughly two months. Sure, he keeps trying to tell me he's my neighbor, but I know better. Anyway, this episode also makes a great characterization of the devil. Anyway, this episode also makes a great characterization of the devil, how he is a trickster that knows how to get people to do what he wants. So, The Howling Man is a great episode that makes you want to think twice before you let somebody out of a room. Number 8. Dust. In Texas, a young Mexican man is about to be executed for the accidental murder of a little white girl. The man who supplies the ropes for the hanging tricks the Mexican man's father into buying magic dust that will cure the town of racial prejudice and save his son's life. However, come execution time, will the dust work? The episode is based on a story that Rod Serling wrote before he created the Twilight Zone, but since this is the Twilight Zone, it has a supernatural twist to it. This episode is saying something about prejudice, how it is so evil and so common that the only way it will ever be cured is by the use of magic. Of course, this is reality, so magic doesn't exist. However, it has a positive outlook. There could be a possibility that prejudice will eventually phase out, and the world will be filled with love and tolerance. That alone is where the magic comes from. So, Dust is another great episode that isn't a preachy look at prejudice and shows that all we need in the world is a little magic. Number 7, Mr. Dingle the Strong. Burgess Meredith plays a down-on-his-luck man who is given super strength by Martians. With his newfound strength, the man becomes a local celebrity and an unstoppable powerhouse. This has got to be the funniest episode of this series. I know the show is a science fiction show and isn't supposed to be funny, but that doesn't mean it can't have a few funny episodes. When Mr. Dingle becomes strong, he just destroys every little object by accident with some of the most humorous destructions ever filmed. It's like a live action Popeye cartoon. However, the humor just doesn't come from Mr. Dingle's strength, it also comes from the Martians. Get a look at these things. <laughs> Look at them! They look like something a kid would think of! <laughs> now, let's not be immature. It was the early 60s, and something like this had probably never been seen before at that time, and it was probably considered a creative design. But, other than that, it's hilarious! <laughs> 
Plus, this episode takes a humorous look at celebrities, how you can be a nobody one minute, but then all of a sudden become a huge star, only for you to go back to being a nobody after you lose your luster. So, Mr. Dingle the Strong might be an episode that's not well liked by fans, but I'm a sucker for live action cartoons, so I can't help but to love it. Number 6. A Thing About Machines A rich man has almost every little piece of technology that anybody could have. There's only one problem. He hates technology. He's a traditionalist and feels that machines are is what's causing society to fall. These are insults that his machines don't take lightly as they plan to get some revenge on him. This episode touches upon what I'm sure most of us think about, the advancement of technology, and how some of us will still not appreciate what technology will do for us. Plus, the acting of the main character is great. He's such a stuck-up jerk that you just want to see his machines kill him. Almost every machine comes to life. The TV, the electric razor, even the typewriter. I've always loved plots that deal with things coming to life, and this episode more than satisfies my hunger. So, A Thing About Machines is another great episode that'll stop you from ever cursing at your computer again. Number 5. The Man in the Bottle An antique store is nearing bankruptcy, and the husband and wife owners are about ready to call it quits. However, they stumble upon a bottle that has a genie inside, and he can make all their wishes come true. And bad things to happen as well. I always wondered what this show would do with a genie plot, and this episode was exactly how I pictured it. Unlike most genies that you hear about these days, the genie in this episode is one tricky mother trucker. He is able to find loopholes in the wishes, and he causes consequences to happen. He's no Robin Williams genie. Plus, this episode is really bittersweet. You really want to see the couple get out of the rut they're in, and you're happy when the wishes come true for him. However, it's back to being depressed when the consequences come around. This episode flicks your emotions like a light switch. Happy, sad, happy, sad. Cut it out! Anyway, The Man in the Bottle is another great episode of this season that shows the darker side of genies. Number 4. Long Distance Call When a grandmother is nearing death, she gives a toy telephone to her grandson. After she dies, the grandson is able to talk to her by using the phone, and the grandma doesn't plan on letting her grandson go that easily. This is one creepy episode. It's another one that deals with death, as it deals with the aftermath of death. It takes a look at how people are affected by the death of someone they're close to, and that some aren't able to let them go. This episode tugs at the heartstrings because it is told through the eyes of an innocent child, and that always makes a bigger impact. This is an episode that hits me too. I'm very close to my grandmother, and I have been all my life. When it's her time to go, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. However, this episode tells that it's important to move on, and that we shouldn't waste our lives mourning over the deaths of those we love. What also makes this episode creepy is a plot point. I don't want to give it away, though. Hey, I'm making these videos to say my favorite episodes, not to give away the whole plots for those too lazy enough to watch the show. So, Long Distance Call is one episode that will make you want to burn any toy phones you see. Number 3. Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up? Two policemen are on the trail of a being from outer space, and their search leads them to a diner that's full of people that just got off a bus. Tension builds as questions are raised about who the Martian is, and if the Martian isn't the only thing they're looking for. This episode is a huge fan favorite, and I can see why. It's got a Monsters Are Due on Maple Street vibe to it. However, this episode's twice as suspenseful because there are lots of crazy characters that could be the Martian. I'm surprised the old man got off scot-free. Also, it not only has one twist ending, but two. Yeah, this one pulled no punches. Of course, I'm also in the mood for mysteries, so that is the reason this one is so high on the list. If it wasn't for how good the next two are, it probably would have been number one. What episodes could be better than this one? Well, let's take a look. Number two, Eye of the Beholder. A woman has just overgone surgery to repair her face, and her face is wrapped in bandages. She spends most of the episode pleading to look like everybody else and not wanting to be a freak. 
Finally, the doctor starts to undo the bandages, and, well, let's just say your jaw will be taking a dive to the floor. This episode is one of the most famous episodes of the series, and I completely agree with it. The episode has quite possibly the best cinematography of the whole series. Most of it's shot in a dark hospital room, and none of the characters' faces are shown. It feels like a short movie. In fact, all of this show's episodes do. But this one is the best example of it. I can safely say that even though the ending was spoiled for me, thank you very much, TV Guide, this episode still impressed me, and I fell in love with it. For an early 60s TV show, it had great production values. You almost forget you're watching a TV show. I could talk about this episode all day, but I can only say so much without giving away the ending. I will say that when the ending comes around, this episode will have you look at society in a whole different way. So, whether you already know the ending or not, I can say that Eye of the Beholder is a landmark of the show, and it's one of its all-time best episodes. Number 1. The Invaders A woman lives in a little shack in the middle of nowhere. However, her nights turn to terror when she's invaded by little aliens that cause the woman to jump into action to defend her home. I was going to put Eye of the Beholder at number one, but there was something about this episode that made me like it more. I just love that, aside from the ending quotes by one of the invaders and Rod Serling's narration, this episode doesn't have any dialogue. You feel exactly what the woman is going through just by looking at her body language. You can tell she is trying her best to defend herself, and we become just as frightened as she is. I also love the uncomfortable tone this episode sets up. Can you imagine being in the comfort of your own home, but you're all of a sudden unable to go anywhere in your house without a chance of something being in there ready to cause harm to you? I know that feeling. It's bad enough I'm afraid to walk around my house. I don't need little aliens with knives stalking me. Plus, there is the ending. Not going to say what it is, but man, it'll make you look differently at space travel. So, The Invaders is my favorite episode of Season 2 of The Twilight Zone. Because the idea of little aliens walking around my house scares the crap out of me. But not as bad as mannequins do. Ugh. There are my top 10 favorite Twilight Zone episodes of Season 2. Are you scared yet? Oh, you are? Well, prepare to be more scared because you haven't seen how far this show can really go to scaring you. I'm Ben, and I'm signing out. I'm gonna go feed the devil. He's really starting to annoy me.